the two worlds of Calgary, linked to the past, to the rustic life, tied to tomorrow, to new turns, new times. And the time has come to move on, to lead the way to a new golden age. The door is open. Pass through it. For if your time isn't now, it may never be. When the future is closing in so fast, so confidently, so quietly. Sometimes to move on means to remain on top, to focus solely on what lies ahead. To ride momentum. Or the emotions of a moment at home. Worlds may collide in Calgary, but the winds of change will be the winner. At the World Figure Skating Championships. And just about a month after the Olympic Games, another major title on the line here at the ISU World Figure Skating Championships presented by Olay. The Pengrove Saddle Dome here in downtown Calgary, Alberta, Canada, site of the 88 Olympic Games, a memorable one, now playing host to the World Figure Skating Championships. And the men's free skate already underway. Some of the top names still to come. In fact, Evan Lysacek, the American, he came back at the Olympics. He needs another comeback. Double-digit deficit for Lysacek here, heading into the last portion of the competition. Cheng Zhang Li from China, jogging backstage, had a great performance in the short program. Jeffrey Buttles here, Emmanuel Sandu is here, Ilya Klimkin, the top Russian, is here without Yevgeny Plushenko, who won the Olympic gold, but is not here skating at the World Championships. And hi, everybody. Thrilled to have you along here in Calgary. Terry Gannon, along with the four-time world champ, Kurt Browning, here in the ice box, as we've <laughs> dubbed it here. A nice little place where the fans come to get a bite to eat. A very quiet right now. Ah, there we go. They're just, they're just being very polite, very typically Canadian. Very For polite. you, in deference to the Hall of Famer now, this afternoon, That's Mr. Right. Browning, not only a four-time world champ, but inducted into the World Figure Skating Hall of Fame. You Fantastic didn't trip. day for me. I didn't trip. I tried, and I waved to my mom and dad. It was great. Do I genuflect? Do I kiss the ring now? What? Um, you just buy me a beer later. We'll be, we'll be even. I like your discipline. A lot of fans trying to buy you a Molson here. No, and, not uh, yet. Yeah, I'm not done. we got a lot of work to do today. Major question for the fans. Labatt's or Molson, eh? <laughs> Which one it is it? It depends on what no, arena yeah. you're in. A <laughs> little bit of both. Uh, so, it's special to have the uh, World Championships, though, It's here great. Canadian fans are some of the best fans in the world. They, uh, Every skater loves skating in front of Canadians. They love it. That's why you've we been love a skating you know here. how to ingratiate yourself with an audience. Yes, yeah. it's and something it, that I do and for control a living. over these throughout too. And I, we'll <laughs> Watch see it a little bit more. Yeah. Let me try. Let me try. <laughs> nothing. Zots. You got nothing. So the men's title on the line tonight. We got the gold yep. medal a uh, little bit later. Live coverage throughout the evening, but also the ladies skate for gold Saturday night. One portion of the competition already in the books for them. Many of the names from Torino are here, including the young American, Emily Hughes. What a year it has been for her going to Torino and now skating very well here. Well, she went to the Olympic Games as a, as a gift and she learned and now she's at Worlds. I think she just looks like she's so confident this week, having a great time here. Sasha Cohen, the Olympic silver medalist, the overwhelming favorite, but she's in fifth right now. Huge mistakes in her qualifier, but even though she's in fifth, she's within striking range of first place. She wants it. She needs it. The other American teenager, Kimmy Meisner, who was too young a year ago to go to the World Championships. She went to Torino. Now she's very good here. She's in third place. Well, she's, she's got everyone's attention with those triple-triple combinations and her focusing. A very competitive kid. Um, everybody here wants to win this, and everyone could. Fumie Seguri certainly could. She's been on the podium a couple of times at Worlds and just missed the podium in Torino. But there's no question about it. Listen to the fans when I say the name Joanie Rochette <laughs> from Canada, your leader right now. And that is exactly what has greeted Joanie every step of the way, and she's handled it like a dream. She's in first place. Canada can't believe it. It's whether or not she can believe it. Can she handle it? Well, that's the question, too, because right now she is your leader. But it's very slim, the margin. Less than a point over Fumie Shiguri, who is a veteran. She's been here before. Kimmy Meisner, the young teenager, 
Curry Nakano's done the triple axel. Cohen's in fifth. But Sasha Cohen, even though she's in fifth, she's less than two points out of the lead. Remember, it's all about the numbers now under the new scoring system. It's not really about the placement. And as you look at the rest of the top ten, there's a lot of skating left. You've got the short program. You can see that tomorrow night. And then the free skate on Saturday on ESPN, Saturday afternoon. So uh, plenty of time to go. If you're Joni Rochette, you wish there wasn't right now. No. As a Canadian, though, it, you know, it means a lot to the Canadian fans, as you know. Oh, what's what she thinking? What's she thinking? She, you know what? Uh, on a personal level, she's had a lot of turmoil in her life uh, in the past few months. I bet you what she's thinking is that it's just skating. You know what? It's just yeah. skating. And then sometimes your uh, priorities get checked by reality. And uh, maybe, you know, she's just here enjoying it and taking it all in. She's a great girl. I've, I've toured with her. She's got her head on her shoulders. I think she's going to hold her own up in that group. Not what she said about you, but that, that's a different subject. <laughs> what about the... Hey, I got a little bit of a reaction out of the crowd. What about the men, though? As we said, the gold medal is on the line. You've got the yeah. top names. You've got guys like Emmanuel Sandu also has pressure on him. He came back with a great short program uh, wow. after struggling in the, in the first, uh, the qualifying part, the, the three-time Canadian champ. In typical Sandu fashion, when the skating world wants to forget he exists, he won't let them. He just keeps coming back and showing the world that he is one of the best skaters that's ever graced the ice. He just has this amazing ability to just not put a whole week of great skating together. Yeah. Now there's a different Sandu on the ice. He seems so much more focused. I've never seen him land triple axles in a row back to back like he's doing this week. How difficult is it to go to the Olympics? You point your entire season, maybe four years to peak at the Olympics, wow, wow. and then you come back and you skate to the World Championship about a month later. It's different for everyone. For Jeffrey Buttle, he's having trouble. For Johnny Weir, I think he's got unfinished business. So it depends on what the Olympics did to you. Different for everyone. Everyone has a different agenda yep. here at World. So the men uh, live tonight, but uh, a lot of other action here in Calgary at the Saddle Dome, including the original dance and the Americans. Kenneth Belbin, Ben Augusto, looking to become the first U.S. team to win that title. We'll also take a look at the pairs competition. A couple of top Chinese teams, the Russians and Inouye and Baldwin from the U.S. trying to throw triple axel. And a look back at one of the great duels in figure skating history. It took place right here in this building. The Battle of the Bryans, Orser and Boitano, back in 1988. You remember that one, don't you? I was in that dressing room. Couldn't believe the tension. Right downstairs. Take you back to after the qualifying for the men. This it's how the standings look. Lambiel, Nobunari Oda, the young teenager from Japan, Evan Lysacek. So through the first phase of the competition, this is how it stood. Paul Wiley and Kurt Browning joining me for the call of the short programs. Here's a little different look at the shorts. At an event like the World Figure Skating Championships, the main attractions are the skaters. But oftentimes, more interesting than the athletes, are the people who watch them, who live and die with their heroes' ups and downs. Romania's Gheorghe Keeper is closely studied by his daughter, Flora. On the ice, Georgia Keeper. She calls him Poppy. I guess we could just call him a skate dad. In skating, the next closest thing to family is the coach. And like a family member, the coach goes through your rises and falls right along with you feeling your pain along the way. Thanks to the game, and representing China, Chen Qiang Li. For every heartbreaking stumble, there's a breathtaking ascent. China's Chen Zheng Li gives Calgary several such moments. Lifting the spirits of the crowd by defying gravity. Appreciated in the form of a standing ovation to wind up in 10th place after the short. The first American to take the ice was Matt Savoy. He turned in a performance good enough for 13th place overall. As ESPN's coverage of the World Figure Skating Championships continues, We'll spotlight two of the more eccentric personalities in the sport, Emmanuel Sandu and the one and only Johnny Weir, both courtesy of North America.
ESPN's ISU World Figure Skating Championships presented by Olay. Brought to you by Olay. Love the skin you're in. And in part by Orita Extra Crispy Easy Fries. The first fries to get truly crispy in the microwave. And AOL. Want a better high-speed internet? You belong at AOL. athlete at these championships, the road to the podium begins in a Calgary municipal bus, even for reigning world champ, Stéphane Lambiel. American Evan Lysacek appears relaxed and focused, perhaps on Olympic redemption. Johnny Weir talks a good game, but is he ready to take the gloves off? Skaters like Nobunari Oda all find their space, literally and psychologically, to prepare. Emotional control will be especially critical for Canadian skater Jeffrey Buttle and Emmanuel Sandu. Skating on home ice in front of the colorful Canadian crowd who want to ride the wave of hometown support without being overwhelmed by Emmanuel Sandu. For his part, Sandu struck the perfect balance. Turning in a strong and stirring performance. Drawing energy from the fans, engaging and entertaining them in return. his efforts, a spot atop the leaderboard, for the time being. For waiting in the wings, the American champion, representing the United States, Johnny Weir. Following what was a personal best at home in Canada for Emmanuel Sandu, it's the U.S. champ, Johnny Weir. Back spasms early here in uh, the practices in Calgary for Johnny. So he's had treatment on those. Peter Carruthers told us before he took the ice that he had some treatment last night. He struggled with that. Certainly a struggle at the Olympics where he came in fifth. Here, he's in sixth after his qualifying round, but less than seven points off the lead. That's next to nothing. He can make that up. He's got to go, though. Where he did not struggle at the Olympic Centurino was in the short program. He was brilliant there. His program, the Swan, by Camille Saint-Saëns, he opens with triple axle. Smooth right out, what he was known for. Beautiful. He's going to follow that up with a triple lutz, triple toe loop. And again, like Paul said, watch the smooth ride on his landing. Position very difficult, can't take. So watch him move through a circular footwork sequence. He's such a natural skater, he almost makes it look like he's not even trying. We had to try on that one though. Triple flip, but he saved it.
skate, though, in a program. Definitely not skating like a guy who's in survival mode, as Priscilla Hill, his coach, told us. I was tight, and the only thing I really wanted was to actually get through the program, so I had no real expectations as far as results or uh, performing certain elements are concerned. I just wanted to make it through the program and not hurt that bad. That's, that's been the main objective. I'm trying. I'm here and I'm I'm competing and I don't plan on withdrawing now. I only have one more program of the season. Two of skating's most unique characters before the cameras. Sandu savors his moment in the spotlight. But yet to skate. His Canadian compatriot, Jeffrey Buttle, and loose-limbed and often teary-eyed Japanese skater Oda. Plus, Evan Lysacek, for now, in his own world, about to begin his quest for a world title. While the man who currently holds it can't seem to hold on to his iPod, we'll have to take better care of his crown, for there's always someone looking to chase you down at the World Figure Skating Championships. So much of skating is a waiting game. Jeffrey Buttle skates last in this short program, so his wait is the longest. With his work done for the night, Emmanuel Sandu waits to see where he'll wind up in the standings. And Evan Lysacek has been waiting for this night ever since his Olympic shorts succumbed to a stomach virus. A stumble on his triple-toe combination left him in third, with five skaters still to skate. pretty nervous and it's tough to get a short program like the Olympics out of your head. I did my best and um, it wasn't great and it wasn't terrible, just somewhere in between. It wasn't right on and, and that's what I needed tonight. Nobunari Oda didn't go to the Olympics, but he's had quite a year. First, he came out of nowhere to win the NHK trophy, expressing overwhelming emotion in his moment of triumph. He was his country's national champion until a scoring error was discovered, changing the outcome and bringing on more tears. But on this night in Calgary, he ends up with plenty to be happy about. Advantage Oda. As the youngest skater here, you looked a little worried. What did they say to you? What did your coach say to you? I was so nervous because... I Nerves shouldn't be a problem for the next skater. He knows what it takes to spin gold at the World Championships. Next skater, representing Switzerland, Stéphane Lombier. The first jump for him is the hardest, the triple axel. He's really struggled with it all season. In fact, in Torino, he didn't do one. It's a new program for Torino. He's the kind of guy that in the middle of the season he could just change it, change his program, do a brand new thing. Did the same thing at the Worlds last year for his long. Triple Axel. Oh. Very yeah, unusual. <laughs> Safe it down. Safe at second base. Yeah. <laughs> just the pop-up slide. It is that right landing leg that is injured, the knee, the ligament. Well, Stefan's known for landing really low in his knee already, so if he's been injured, that's, you know, that's obviously, it might become a problem. But here's his strength coming into his quad. Oh, wow. I don't think unless you've skated, you know how hard that was. Wow. But it should have been a quad triple. He turned it into a quad double. So it downgrades a little bit of his value there. But what a fight. Yeah. really has a bit of everything. He's an incredible spinner, very artistic, very musical, an athlete, obviously, and a fighter, too. To the left.
addition to this flying since been cap butterfly. The inside edge there. And now twisting the core of the body. Extra points for that. He says that it's the Swiss chocolate that makes him a great spinner, but I think it's a lot of hard work. did not disappoint. Lombiel skate good enough to put him in the lead. Just like everyone else in the arena, Nobunari Oda waited for the results. And after the number crunching, he was in second, which suited him just fine. Next up, Francis Brian Joubert. And hello, Mr. Buttle. This is your wake-up call. You're on deck. Where lies the essence of the world? The eyes have it. The watching. The witnessing. The focused stares. Anticipating. The glances. Revealing. The concentrated gaze within. Replaying the program until you're ready to realize your vision. Representing France, Brian Joubert. Coming off a sixth place finish at the Olympics. Well, he's certainly been winning the practices here. He looks fit, strong, and focused. Been working on his spins with Lucinda Rue, the great spinner from Switzerland. I wonder how long Biel feels about that. <laughs> he opens with the quad toe, triple toe. He likes to put it into the corner. Toe. Come on. Oh, wow. Nice. See, I don't think with six extra pounds, there's no way he would have been doing that second trip. He landed so far forward and his toe pick lost a lot of momentum. And you know what? When you feel good, you've got more confidence. He was nailing triple axles in practice like this. Wow. Right over his knee. That landing position, just perfect. So he feels more comfortable with his weight, he feels more in shape, and I think he feels more comfortable in this particular short program. That's right, and he's got his old long back too, so he's feeling like he's a contender again. That's maybe the punching part. <laughs> Third jumping pass, a triple flip, huge! skating event needs at least one action hero. <laughs> Car chasing. Look at the improvement on these spins, too. So much faster. Changes to that outside edge so easily. And now this position. Congratulations, Lucinda. Yeah, I should have taken a few lessons from her. <laughs> Let's watch Brian Joubert take it home. step in the world. The first entrance into the sense spin belt. Cleanly performed program. Wow. 
I guess they'll have to wait to die another day. Joubert. Brian Joubert. <laughs> Double notch five from France. <laughs> Pretty good. Wow. So now with the judges shaken and stirred, Joubert has license to be thrilled. However, Laviel is still out in front. And Canadian Jeffrey Buttle is ready to take the ice, which means no lines at the concession stands. Representing Canada, Jeffrey Buttle. Buttle has trouble with his triple lutz. But no worries, eh? You're still one of us. You can see it in their eyes. The pleasure. The pressure. Desire. The common bond. So I'll be back for the free skate, hoping to take in the view from the top of the world. And as we promised not to have any more James Bond references, a live look now at the standings heading into the free skate. Lambiel with the lead. The teenagers from Japan. Oda in second. Some people think this could be Brian Joubert's night. He's in third right now. Ahead of the two Canadians. And then a lot of ground to make up for Johnny Weir, Evan Lysacek, and Matt Savoy. Savoy currently down in 10th. And he will take the ice. Our live coverage of the men's free skate from Calgary at the World Championships is next. Tonight, the men. Tomorrow night, the free dance, along with the ladies' short at the World Figure Skating Championships, presented by Olay. And we're in high def on ESPN HD throughout the week here in Calgary. Terry Gannon back with Paul Wiley and Kurt Browning. You guys have been in this spot before. You know what it's all about. Some, some thoughts as we watch the final two groups. Well, it has been quite a long season with the Olympics and the Worlds here. Uh, the big ticket items are really where the, these skaters have to focus tonight. Four-time world champ. never know with Johnny Weir, even when he tells you uh, what's on his mind during the press conferences. So the free skate here, second to last group with the American on the ice, Matt Savoy. 25 years of age and heading off to Cornell Law next year. So this may be it. He hasn't said that. He might still skate, but you know, if you, you're a Matt Savoy fan, enjoy this. Because he has gone to school throughout, not only an undergrad degree, but also a graduate degree and off to Cornell Law. But one last appearance here at Worlds. Matt, a very introspective skater, chooses over with a triple loop. He fell on it in the qualifying, doubled it here. It's programmed to the mission. Choreographed by Tom Dixon. The strength of his artistry is what got him to the Olympics in Torino. Triple axel, triple toe, <laughs> beautiful jump. Now, made the comment about his artistry, but that was a phenomenal yeah. jump right there. to the edge of the ring with his triple double double combination but you're right Paul this is where he shines just watch this circular step system of the new judging system is that it 
doesn't leave the skaters time in between the main jumps and elements to create a mood on the ice, it can still be done. Well, I think the irony is that there's more than ever uh, emphasis on what it, what comes between the interpretation and the transitions are all getting a mark here. Second triple axle. This one will receive a bonus if he hits it. Oh. The deduction for that fall, unfortunately. Quite a season for Matt Savoy, and we certainly wish him well as he goes off to study law school. A smart guy, master in urban planning. <laughs> wow. Might be the understatement of the year, a smart guy. Probably, yeah. <laughs> University of Illinois, and then uh, Bradley as well before that, and now off to Cornell Law, and had to fight just to make the Olympic team. Remember, there were the Tim Gables and the Michael Weisses there, the former U.S. champs, guys who had medaled at the Olympics and the Worlds, but he did it. He made the Olympic team, came in seventh. There's your leader overall, Stefan Lambiel, is in the building, iPod on. He's taking care of it this time. Backstage, getting ready, Brian Joubert. Short program, he was James Bond. It'll be Keanu Reeves in the free skate, going back to his Matrix free skate, and he had a lot of success with. World silver medalist, Brian Joubert. Looks relaxed, huh? Yeah, when you guys got ready backstage, you never went through your programs, did you? And you went through everything. Everything. <laughs> about Paul, 20 times. Paul and I are about polar opposite about how we, like, I was trying to run around and meet everyone and have fun, and you were focused, very focused. You were Always trying to taking my pulse. flush everything from your mind, the and last you were trying thing. to cram everything into your mind. Yes. Interesting. And Kurt that's, talked that's, quite a bit in the locker room, too. What you, past tense, taught. There's Matt Savoy. <laughs> Went to Brandon, his longtime coach on the right there. The Second trick pull axel here. He just doesn't get over the right side and up a little bit loose in the air. You can see he's under rotated there. If he were under rotated more than three quarters of a turn, that would only count as a double. And now the number 60.72. For the technical side, the artistic side, the program components, one point deduction for the fall, and free skate plus the short program. Don't forget the qualifying 227.41. So Matt Savoy, in terms of those that have skated, currently in second. If he doesn't come back to eligible skating, it's a pretty darn good career and good way to cap it off at the Olympics and then the Worlds. Absolutely. So we move on. 
second to last group here. And Cheng Jang Lee from China States, taking the ice. Representing the People's Republic of China, Chen really? Chang Lee. Cheng Chung, his home city, but he's been in Beijing for a number of years. That's where all the top skaters from China train, living in the dorms there. And in eighth, as you heard just a moment ago, so almost 13 points out of the lead, but less than 10 out of third place, that last spot on the podium still. Still with a chance to do that. He was absolutely magnificent in the short. And Terry, you mentioned the short. He got 14.43 points for his quad-triple combination, which was the most points awarded for a single element among all the men. And he opens with it right here. Quad-toe, triple-toe, unbelievable. Just like the short program. When this guy came on the scene, that was all anybody was talking about. But now he's in the last flight contending. His whole style of skating has improved from the spins to the footwork. Watch this. It's all about the jumps of this guy. Triple flip. Oops. Sorry about that. I, I think I jinxed him. Well, he's capable of two quads in a program. He had been planning a quad style cow. Perhaps he's playing a little bit conservatively. Why would you do that in eight? Well, it's a good question, Terry. up to the judges one foot footwork before the sequence this is where he's really improved skaters train there and the main training center is the capital gymnasium we've been there for cup of china the last few years it's been taken over because it will be the volleyball venue for the next summer olympic games so the top level skaters are after going they've had to go to an ancillary rink and even some of them are going to have to move from that training conditions aren't great second triple axle there a little turn between into the triple toe loop that will earn a bonus of 10% since it came after the halfway mark. And this sometimes, you know, you start wanting it too bad, the program starts falling apart and you start making bad decisions. We really saw that at the Cup of China. He was doing, he was second place after the short program, really skated well there and just fell apart. Lost 33 points because he popped four elements. at the world was in 03 he was fourth when that was under the old system i think he really is one of the, an example of one of the skaters who has had a hard time with the new system because it really 
takes a look at the footwork and the spins, which are not his strength. He's Even really though he's improved, jumps. you're right. Just not enough. Pretty cool quad, though. <laughs> what do you say? True enough. Second half of the program, though, was not what he had imagined. Chinese Federation very much in control of all the skaters at this level. In fact, his teammate, Min Zhang, who's skating here this week, who's turning 30 this week, we asked him if he was going to retire or not. He said, I don't know. I'll have to ask the Chinese Federation whether I can. I want to. Can't argue with the success certainly they've had over the last 10 years or so, especially in pairs. Well, the quad toe, triple toe was meant just a gigantic. Watch the knee go through tight air position there, reach back, great height, and the ride out. Excellent. Here's another look. The right arm, so strong, goes right through. He leans a little bit forward. Look at him looking around there, then right over his knee on that landing. Well, the excitement of quads is sometimes overlooked, but footwork, a very important part of the, the overall score in the new system, we are going to want to turn both directions. Um, you're going to want to use edges. You're going to see the new style of footwork going back and forth, not only lengthwise with the ice, but edging back and forth, stopping and rebuilding speed. His footwork, not the best, but it's getting better. Some trouble in the program, though. We'll see how much it costs him as we check his marks in just a moment. Manuel Sandu, that's how he gets ready. Hmm. The score is Back in Calgary at the World Figure Skating Championships presented by Olay, Chang Zhang Li from China, waiting for his marks. He said he slept 16 hours the night before the short program. Must not have gotten that much sleep last night. It was not nearly as good here in the free skate. The numbers 229.03 overall, currently in second, ahead of Matt Savoy. The short program's short enough that when you're on, you're on. Long program, it's a long time to stay on. Now, Bon Probert from France, one of the early skaters right now with the lead. They had a good effort here in the free. Anique Dumont, his coach, more animated than anyone alongside the race. She must have been uh, the next cheerleading. The currently Early. ranked 11th, representing the Czech Republic, Thomas. Them 19 years of age out of nowhere here. Second to last group from the Czech Republic. Tomas Werner. Log on now to WWW. You know the rest. You think he put that up there? A little self-advertisement? Yeah, I'm amazed at how many skaters have their own websites now. Sure. <laughs> He's got quite a fan club right there. 18th place at the Olympics and 10th at Europeans. Not much else, though. We have not seen much of Tomas Werner. Four-time Czech national champ. There's a real intensity to this opening. He uses his arms. He almost reminds it a bit of Ilya Kulik, how he edges around. Up in here, the triple axle. Oh, popped into a single. Did a beautiful one in the qualifying. Well, Thomas is causing a buzz backstage, not only for his jumping ability, but for his... We'll see how this quad toe goes. There he is, he's back. Wow. I was going to say that the, the girls, the uh, they're all backstage talking about him. He's causing a buzz. They don't care about his skating, they just want to look at him. Usually Joubert gets most of that attention backstage. He's got a challenger. Triple X, double toe, double loop, Paul. It's, is it still, you still can put that in later in the program. That's right, you're allowed one three jump combination. And if he's smart, he'll do it because you can get so many more points that way. But in the qualifying round, he really tired out. 
even fell on his footwork at the end of the program. That was a great triple X there. Still a teenager, we may see much more of Tomas Werner. One of the reasons we haven't seen much of him as of yet last year, he was set to compete on the senior level in the Grand Prix, the top international series, but he, he broke his ankle into one practice at Cup of China this season because he hadn't already qualified for the Olympics. He went to the Carl Schaefer Memorial and won that. Got into the Olympics, came in 18th. Here he is at World. Uh, hard call on a second triple axle. So difficult when you've missed the first one because put, put you it think, in your mind and move on. You think, well, how am I going to do this? <laughs> and then you're just that much more tired. Well, he fell on the fork in the qualifying, as I said as well. I think he just gets a little tired. Maybe he could do a little bit more training to get ready for next year. He's only 19. When I was 19, I... <laughs> yeah, it didn't breathe. <laughs> it just flies through the program. Trains in the Czech Republic, Germany, and Finland. Maybe he's traveling too much. Taking that break before the forward. He's got one more jumping pass here, a triple flip coming up. put a combination into it too. Do triple flip, double toe. Well, this is a fantastic learning experience for him. He, he just hit the boards at this end and went down there and did a triple flip. We're going to see more of this guy for sure. Someday perhaps he'll follow in the footsteps of the great Czech skaters, Andre Nepola. It's a Bob Chick and Barna. Jumping Joe, right? Absolutely. Tomas Werner from the Czech Republic. Not the free skate that he had envisioned, but uh, quite an experience here at the World Championships, making it to the second to last group, 19 years of age. Coming up next, Evan Lysacek. Spent the year as the World Bronze Medalist, still the reigning bronze medalist at Worlds, season where he became a little older, much wiser, the veteran of an eye-opening and humbling Olympic experience. This season for me has been very difficult. A lot of highs and lows, a roller coaster ride, if you will. I came in at the beginning of the season and I felt some of the pressure for the first time of being a world medalist. It was difficult. I thought the Olympics was about being perfect and winning medals and, you know, everything goes smoothly. And I quickly found out that no, it's not. It's about fighting and it's about being the last one standing and it's about, um, courage and you know having heart and soul for what you're doing it's hard enough when you're healthy and in perfect condition to do it but you know this is the olympics it's pressure i'm sick i'm on an iv and i just kind of like had to reach down deep inside and find like this olympic spirit that i hear so much about i totally discovered it there i've wanted my whole career to be a world champion so Knowing it could come true within a week is pretty creepy. I'm just going to go out and try to have fun, but I'm hoping to cap off the season with a great performance here at the World. Quite a rewarding experience at the Olympics in the end, but in the warm-up here trying to quad fall, this was 
Well, he, not positive. He took two bad falls. This one, the worst of them, goes right on his inside edge and smacks on his hip, which is just what he did in the qualifying round as well. You can see him grab his hip, and uh, he just doesn't need any more injuries or illnesses. No, he doesn't. Uh, still taking antibiotics for the illness that uh, he had in Torino. Yet when you have a fall like that, especially when you try and a quad, mindset-wise, how does that affect you? Well, if you're... <laughs> If you're him, I don't think it's a good idea because he's been fighting this quad. If it was Jobert, who's got a quad in his belt, he can go back to all those landed ones that he's talked to, done in the past, build back his confidence while he's backstage. He's got none of those to build his confidence with. I think it was a terrible thing to have happen to him just before he skates. Mm, the free skate numbers and the overall total, 221.83 with Tomas Werner. That is a personal best from the youngster from the Czech Republic. Friel Bear, Cheng Zheng Li, Matt Savoy, still your top three. As we move on, the next some of the days. top names and those that we have come to know over the last number of years. Evan Lysacek. The U.S. silver medalist, Evan Lysacek. The sickness, the IV, you heard him talk about it at the Olympics. It was a learning experience for him, but it, I think he proved to himself and everyone else what he had in the free skate and to come back. Now he needs another comeback. He's in seven. I think this whole season is turning out to be a learning experience for Evan. This guy wants to be the best in the world. He, he's not afraid to say it. And with all the injuries, the IVs, and that huge fall, this is going to make or break how he feels about himself next year. Quad would be first up. He will not shrink it. back from this. Wow. Look at that. That's amazing. Little two-footed landing, but he turns it into a quad triple, falls out of it. The good thing about that is that though the grades of execution will penalize him a bit, that the value of what he did was 13 points for the base value of it. Triple axle. You know what? I don't think it's about points right now. I think, I think right. it's about heart. And I'm shocked. I, I'm so happy for him. This is awesome. Coach Frank Carroll told Peter Carruthers that he should attack this program. This program is about power, passion, and truth. He told him to go on the offensive. And numbers-wise, he's less than 12 and a half off the lead. That margin has been made up before. Emmanuel Sandu has done that to win a gold medal before. He's a little more than nine points out of third place in terms of the podium. And triple axle coming up here. So we're in a bonus. Terrific with the combination. <laughs> that you will never forget. And I just have a feeling that this skate right now is a moment that you will never forget no matter where he places in this event.
Canadian crowd picking up on what they're watching. Everyone clapping in time. moment well I said he was a fighter and I couldn't I can't even believe how much he fought here from the Maple Leaf to the Stars and Stripes everyone's standing in honor of Evan Lysacek didn't you get the feeling from this crowd that they could hardly wait to stand? <laughs> well, they watched the qualifying round. They saw him fall hard on the quad. Then they saw the warm-up where he fell twice. And they thought, well, is he going to have to get off because he's so injured? And then he comes out and hits it and turns it into a quad triple. A man who seemingly needs adversity, needs a deficit. The hug from Frank Carroll, his marks, next. Frank Carroll, all smiles in the kiss and cry along with Evan Lysacek. The best you've ever seen from him? The, the gutsiest skate I've ever seen from oh, him. Oh, absolutely the best. Not a bad time to do it either. And remember, 12 and a half behind. Not quite 12 and a half points off the lead. That's nope. been made up before with that performance. Hey, you know, well, maybe maybe too far back for a medal, but how about a badge of honor? Yeah. Don't jump to that yeah, conclusion. We'll wait and see. Watch this. I'm going... I'm watching them skate into this quad. I'm going, is he going to triple flip? Is he going to do a quad? No, he's going for it. A little mistake, but do we care? Nope. Especially after falling in the warm-up. And, and badly. Um, and able to do it, willing to do it, in the free skate. So the marks now for Lysacek. And the crowd reacting. Technical marks. Look at that. Well over 70, almost 77, 73 for program components, Paul. Well, you know, he got he got great marks in the spins as well. He got level threes, level threes for his step sequence. He counted that quad triple as well. It was not a personal best though, in terms of the free skate. No, I didn't think it would be personal best, but I don't think he remembers the other one that was now. This is the one he remembers. This is where he's going to pull strength from for the next competition and the next and the next. Still only 20 years of age, and for the moment at least, your leader. From an American out to a Russian, Ilya Klimkin, the veteran at the age of 25 from Moscow, all the way back in 1999, he won the World Junior Championship. Big things expected of him, but he's had injury after injury, about two years away from the ice, Coming back and now trying to get back to a top level. Currently in ninth. Step out on that triple axle, triple toe. He's one of the more interesting skaters in the world in terms of the choreography. Although I don't think this music quite sets up his program. Quad toe here. Did the quad triple in the qualifying? Oh, just a triple. And the difference between a quad toe, triple toe, and a triple toe is about nine points. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, 
Olympic. There was no other word for that. He if just that changed his program. Succeed. Changed his program. That's gutsy. That's a guy that came to fight. took Klimkin off the ice, out of competition for those two seasons. Didn't even get on the ice at all for an entire year. He had surgery back in November of 2004. And prior to that, leg injuries, three different surgeries back in 2002. His coach, after a long battle, Leukemia passed away. His dad died back in 99, electrocuted, plugging a drill into the wall in their living room. It has been a tough go for this 25-year-old. A lot more pressure on Ilya to step up and take over. generation of Russian skaters is coming from. I mean, to this point, they keep winning, but from this point on, no one's taking the lead. When we talk about men, pairs, perhaps fans, well, they seem to have such an amazing ability to find talent and nurture it. If there is a deficit right now, I doubt it'll last long. This spin, very difficult, moving from the outside edge to the inside edge. That creating a higher level. This inside Probably not exactly what he had hoped for, but he did pull off that quad, which was second in the program. The 25-year-old from Moscow, Ilya Klimkin, in ninth after the short, needing a big performance. Didn't get it here in the free skate, but we'll check his marks in just a moment. Right now, though, Evan Lysacek just settled down at the moment. Standing by with Peter Carruthers. All right, Terry. Evan, you had that huge fall on the quad in the warm-up, but then in the free program, first up, quad toe, triple toe, you did it. What made the difference? Um, I think just I was telling myself I got four and a half minutes left and then I'm finished with the season and um, I honestly have never been so glad to be finished with anything in my life. It's been a roller coaster from start to finish with injury and illness and nonstop travel, so it's over. <laughs> You finish the program, the big fist pumps. What does that symbolize in this entire season to finish like this? Well, I have definitely had the strongest season of my career um, with, you know, some medals on the Grand Prix circuit and a second place at Nationals, a, a great performance at the Olympics. So to cap it off with a good long, um, I, I was far from perfect at this competition. I think um, the illness that I have and the exhaustion is part of the factor why, um, you know, everything wasn't great. But to, to end it like that feels good. All right, well, a good fight. We're going to hand it back to you guys. 
All right, Peter. Browning says he can't medal. I say maybe. I say maybe, but I think that it all depends on Oda. Definite maybe for Lysa Check. Back with more. <laughs> The final group getting ready to take the ice. There's Johnny Weir. He needs a uh, big effort here in the free skate. The American champ. And Brian Joubert could be his night. A lot of people think that uh, he's primed and ready to go. Back to the Matrix program for him. Among those in attendance watching, Brian Orser, the 87 world champ. Who could forget it? He and Brian Boitano right here in this building. One of the most compelling and dramatic confrontations in skating history. And still today, nearly 20 years later, it triggers deep emotions for both athletes who wage the battle of the Bryans. The Olympics is the only sporting event that really lives up to its billing every single time. To be a flag bearer at any Olympic Games is, is a huge honor. I had never felt so proud to be Canadian. This is important to me. I mean, it was the most important night of skating in my life. Saddledome was filled with 22,000 people, and half of them were American and half of them were Canadian. And the energy, the electricity in that building was just something that you could see. It was incredible. The anticipation of this final group was, was overwhelming. Both Brian and I had followed this script, and it came down to the long program, which is what everybody was waiting for. The Battle of the Bryans was just, we were just following this along perfectly. As I was stroking around and everybody else was getting off the ice, the entire audience was going, Boitano, Orsa, Boitano, Orsa. When I skated out there, I hit my spot, and I turned around, and I looked, and I saw the Olympic rings. And actually, you can see me change um, my blinks of my eyes. I go into this real zone. Everything he had was in that. I knew Brian Orser had to skate, and I didn't want to watch him skate. So I went back in the dressing room. I took my costume off. I, I put my Walkman on, and I sat in the bathroom stall. And I'm like, okay, six minutes, he's finished. So I take my headphones off, and I hear his very last mark. And his last mark was his only 6.0. And I went, I lost. Okay, I lost. When he walked into the dressing room, his hand went... He, he had that blank stare, and his hand went from his head, and it went down his face like this. It went down his face like that. And he didn't make a sound, and he just walked into the bathroom, and he laid on the floor. And I turned to him when he finally came out of the bathroom, and I said, what do I say? What can we say? He's like, there's, there's nothing to say. I think just the, the step out of the triple flip made the difference. I knew... An Olympic champion had to stay on her feet. I figured this one little slip was so minor that it would be okay. You know, it came down to a 5-4 split. It was the closest it's ever been in, in skating history. Ouch. So that's a tough one to, to uh, live with. Brian Orser was supposed to win that, uh, that event, and his advantage was not only just with the judging panel, but just because everybody wanted him to win, and it was really his turn. And figure skating is political, and when your turn comes up, especially in those days, you got to take your turn. I went into those games with nothing else other than to win. So I never for a second thought, you know, about coming second. That moment was a high-pressure moment split in half, and half of it was him and half of it was me. It gives you a bond that can never be broken and that nobody else will really ever understand. And I think we gave the audience and the fans around the world everything that they were waiting for, and that everything that they expected from us. We followed through and gave them the Battle of the Bryants.
And it was some night, and neither speaks lightly of that night right here in the Saddle Dome in Calgary. Johnny Weir with a fall there in the warm-up. Brian Joubert had one injured his hand a little bit just a moment ago. The final group is at the skate for gold here in Calgary when we return. The last group set to go here inside the Pengrove Saddle Dome in Calgary. Terry Gannon along with Paul Wiley and Kurt Browning as the teenager from Japan is the first to go in the last group. Lombiel, your reigning world champ, has the lead. Nobunari Oda in second. Ryan Joubert rounding out the top three. And then a couple of Canadians and Johnny Weir. But guys, if that warm-up continued another minute, we might not have had a final group here. Now, figure skating's not supposed to be a contact sport, but <laughs> on that warm-up, bodies were flying all over the place. Oda looks loose. How about Weir? Had some trouble. Weir had three falls on quad toe, which he followed up with a successful quad triple-double. Joubert fell on two triple lip loop attempts. Oh. The second time, that, that time hurting his hand. He has looked so great in practice. That's so surprising. Oh, there were some gremlins out there on that warm-up, that's for sure. But was, this next skater, the only guy that had a clean warm-up. About to turn 19 the day after tomorrow. Nobunari Oda. Can he go from being the 2005 World Junior Champ to the 2006 World Champ on the senior level. When you look at Oda, he screams youth. But when you watch his jumps, you just have to respect this guy. Maybe he's only five foot four, so maybe that's why his triple axle looks so big. He's going into his triple axle combination right now. Uncharacteristically put a hand down. Maybe the first one I've seen him miss in like the last 10 tries. We missed that opening triple axle on the four continents and came back and skated brilliantly the rest of the program. A three jump combination, a triple X, triple toe loop, double loop, and he's back. way down deep into the corner. He's showing a lot of composure in this competition. I think this music really suits him. Yeah, David Wilson did a great job with this choreography, and his levels have been very high all season long. Just in this footwork, you can see the different turning and bracket kick turns. 
but even in his spinning, you can really see a maturity that belies his young age at 18. Very massive boy like entrance. about Russia and about sort of the decline. You can really see a rise of Japan now with Malasada and Nobunari Oda, these young skaters, who sort of sprung onto the scene, you know, as junior world champions and won Grand Prix events this season. Not to mention the Olympic <laughs> champs. Shizuka Arakawa. stumble but he brought it together the teenager in second place now you look back Alexei Yagudin won the junior world title back in 96 and in 98 he became the senior champ Plushenko a junior championship in 97 a bronze in 98 oh what is trying to do it the next year win the title oh, here Evan Lysacek holding on to the lead for the moment back to Calgary Brian Joubert on the ice with a chance to win the gold medal. Remember the warm-up and then backstage, shirt off, spraying the elbow. He went down hard, so uh, we'll see if there are any lingering effects. Meanwhile, the teenager, Nobunari Oda, waits for his marks as Joubert, yeah, completes one on the ice, warming up. Pretty remarkable story for this uh, young guy. Did not go to the Olympics, but talk about a range of emotions. He first won the Japanese National Championship, but later, because of a computer glitch, it wasn't built into the Japanese software, it, it didn't penalize him for doing too many triples. They had an award ceremony, everything. He had the gold medal. They took it back. Can you imagine second. losing your national title because you huh. did too many triples? But it, it happens. There's rules, man. Evgeny Pushenko lost the Grand Prix final. That's right. 251.21 for Oda. So he is currently in second place. And he did not receive any points for one of the combinations. We'll clear that up as we go along. Guess who's in first, guys? And which one of us said uh, he me. wasn't going to medal? It's me. Still with a chance. <laughs> that would be Kurt. <laughs> So the American leads. But I'm happy for Evan. I mean, I, I, I was so impressed with what he did tonight. Joubert on the ice, going back to a program which he had a lot of success with back in 2004. A 21-year-old in third place after the short and just a little more than three off the lead heading into this portion of the competition. Well, he's been winning every single practice. He looks completely fit. The warm-up was an anomaly. I just can't believe what I saw. Two falls. So It must be so distracting as he goes into this opening quad-triple combination. He did so well in the short. He's got it. Oh, that's huge. 13 points, base value for that. That's where the confidence comes in, you know, when something goes wrong in that five minute warm up, it doesn't bother you, just get rid of it and go to business. Triple flip, double flip. struggled with in the past but it looked great all week here the triple axle solid over his knee just like the short only two guys have beaten Yevgeny Plushenko the Olympic champ since the last Olympic Games in Salt Lake Joubert's one of them Sandu is the other still to come 
section, Nobunari Oda didn't get credit for one of his combinations because there were too many elements. He can only do so many. Klimt can penalize for doing too many triples. He's down the list. Second quad. Oh, he's lucky to on the ice. <laughs> exactly the same corner. You know, with Stefan being injured and having a tough season, I, I just think this guy is just probably laying a trap. Skate clean. Watch Stefan make, make one mistake, become world champion. There's that loop. <laughs> he missed it twice in the warm-up. I bet he's glad to get that out of the way. I've seen a lot of improvement is in his spins here. He's getting levels by changing edges. He's worked with Lucinda Rue, the Swiss spinning great. I get the feeling that last season he just didn't know how to work this new system. Now he's going to work the audience. Well, all week long you've been dreaming of this moment, and certainly Mom has. You know, his mom's standing ovation from her, but she's not the only one. Much of the crowd here on their feet. Ryan Joubert back to an old familiar friend, his Matrix program. He beat Plashenko with it. Can he beat Lombiel? Weir, Sandu, Fuddle, they're next. Well, he's had this jump, quad toe, in his back pocket all week. Johnny Weir was totally in his way in the warm-up. He didn't care. He landed it, and he landed it right here. Well, if the first quad wasn't good enough, the second one got even better. And talk about working your strengths. So that is kind of the theme, falling down in the warm-up and then skating great. Almost 80 for technical elements. And look at that number, 270.83 wow. overall. The free skate by far a personal best for him. And he vaults into the lead. Raymond, does she know yet? She's got to know. She's got to know. Didn't react much, though. Well, with the way he's been skating all week, maybe she expected it, honestly. He has been clean, clean in the practices. Joubert, check Oda. Didn't you have that feel, too, as soon as he arrived here in Calgary, that he, he can have a great week? Holy. Bring you back just a little bit to the Battle of the Bryans and the atmosphere. I just hope he takes his time before starting this program. 
Jeffrey Buttle, 23 years of age, two-time Canadian national champ in fourth place. A little less than 10 points off the lead heading to the free skate. by Jobert. He doesn't have a quad. Triple toe, triple toe. So light, so perfect. Now when I say he doesn't have a quad toe, I meant he doesn't have one in his back pocket. He needs everything tonight. known for the strength of his program components, the artistic side of his skating. And because of that, Paul, don't you think he has a larger margin for error on the technical side? Well, I would say single axle, double toe isn't going to cut it, but at the Olympics, you know, he made mistakes in the programs and he still meddled. He's always been the right skater at the right time in the last couple of seasons. He's skating in his home country. Chances are, chance at the podium is probably gone already. You know what you do now? You enjoy. Second attempt at a triple axle, also a single. Okay. The handwriting is on the wall now. What a shame, because you really do have to admire his skating, the edge quality. The interpretation, it just comes across the barrier. There's the Jeffrey, I know. with this jump. Triple X, double toe. That's probably the best one he's done all week. Late in the program like that. Good for you. Missing the triple X in the preliminary, missing the triple X in the short program. It's nice to get one under your belt. But I think for Jeffrey, just the whole winning of that, of medal at the Olympic Games, the, the expectations afterwards, the no time to prepare, a lot of media. But you made the point as we started the show, it, it's different for everyone. Everybody's got a different agenda. For him, he comes home in Canada to compete for a world championship. I mean, you've carried the banner compete, for Canadians. Compete, you could almost argue that he was ranked number one coming into this. And true enough, as an Olympic medalist, you're exactly right. So, there is pressure here. Maybe not the same as the Olympics, but it's different for him than the other skaters.
Well, to pop both triple axles, he just couldn't afford. That, I was talking about the big ticket items. Those were his two big ticket items, and he didn't have them. Well, I hope he doesn't take this too hard. You know, it's been a great season. He's going to go back to his house, look on the wall. There's an Olympic medal there. I think he'll get over this. From Ontario, trains in Barrie, Ontario. Long ways from here. We're out west in Calgary. He is the Olympic bronze medalist, but not going to be the world champ here off his effort in Calgary tonight. Check the marks for Jeffrey Buttle. A moment ago, Brian Schubert with a hug and tears after a triumphant performance in the free skate. He's got the lead, and right now, he's with Peter Carruthers. All right, Terry, Brian, you were very emotional just moments ago. Why? Why? Because, uh, you know, to do a competition like this, for me, it's perfect. And after Olympics, it was very difficult for me to... to come back in France because the, the French TV, the French journalist was very difficult with me, with my family and uh, with my all my team. So it was not easy for me to to do a competition like I, like I did. You went back to the Matrix program. What is it about that program that gave you the confidence to skate that well? Yeah, I feel very good in this program. I, uh, <coughs> I did my, my best season with this program. <coughs> Sorry. And, and when I came back right after the Olympics, uh, two days after, it was perfect. My jumps was perfect. My shot program was good also, So, but I don't know why. It was magic. Well, two good quads. Congratulations, <laughs> Brian Joubert. Let's go back upstairs to Terry Gannon. Yeah, Peter and uh, Joubert speaks the truth. A lot of expectations in France and really around the world. He skyrocketed up the ladder in 2004, had a great year. We mentioned he beat Plashenko. Most expected him to really make a run at the Olympic gold medal. It didn't happen, but we're seeing maybe the real Joubert. Well, I tell you what, figure skating, I don't know a lot about a whole lot of other sports, your emotion and how you feel about yourself as a person when you step on that ice really has a lot to do with it. Buttle and the kissing cry. 163.07. We'll show you that throughout the week and the weekend here when he needs to lead. Obviously, doesn't get that. And it was right from the start, really. Never had the rhythm. Never got it going. No. It's just two single axles at the World Championship. I mean, that's something that you really <laughs> can't get over. Even with all the best component scores in the world, which Jeffrey Buttle is known for, gets uh, 7.5 and those out of 10, which is pretty high. Yep. And he said the Battle of the Bryans is what hooked him on the sport of figure skating. You know we would have loved to win a championship here in this building. Representing Canada, Emmanuel Sandu. Here we go. One Canadian to the next. Final thoughts, maybe a Hail Mary. The eternal enigma from Canada, Emmanuel Sandu. Awful in the qualifying. I mean, his coach said it was an embarrassment. And Peter Carruthers, he told us, you know, his coach, Joanne McLeod, longtime coach, said, you're not driving the car right now. You're letting someone else drive. You've got to drive the car. He took control from the moment he stepped onto the ice for the warm-up in the short program. And he was terrific. Now with a chance in fifth to win the gold. Talk about expectations. Jeffrey Buttle did it for Canada at the Olympics. And now we've got 10,000, 12,000 people here holding their breath hoping that he can do it for them at the Worlds. One of the easiest looking quads in the pool. Needs to reach and pull. Oh, that was outside the circle, but he did it anyways. Only a double toe afterwards, though. And when you need everything, that might matter. Takes a very long setup for the next jump, which is a triple axle. He can have a, a bad edge going into it. Very important for him to go over that right side. 
A uh, little bit stepped out of there. Classically trained ballet dancer, Emmanuel Sandu is one of the most artistic skaters and talented skaters in the world. Obviously struggles with inconsistency, but he, like Schubert, has beaten Evgeny Fushenko. We should mention, on a technicality, at the time, Flushenko did one too many combinations. We've seen that happen throughout this evening. Oda penalized for a similar thing tonight. Triple Sao Cao, beautifully done, but on my sheet here it says Quad Sao Cao. He doesn't have to do what's on your sheet. Well, that's true, but when you're trying to win, I recommend it. This next jump will tell the tale. Second attempt at the triple axle. Let's do it in combination. Triple double. Little foot down there. I get a bonus for the for doing it late in the program though. That was an easy triple toe. You may wonder why he would miss such an easy jump. He already tripled out of the quad landed a triple sow and needed to change that jump. He's just getting a little bit on his heel on the landings and so isn't able to hold that. The heel obviously not right over that top of that ball of your foot where you are much more balanced. performance for Emmanuel Sandu, and they're on their feet. A little bit of Jekyll, a little bit of Hyde. That's right. <laughs> this man has fought a lot of demons, publicly and privately, trying to get to a point where he had enough confidence to really make a run at a world championship or an Olympic gold medal. Johnny Weir, the American champ, standing and watching, waiting to take the ice. Joanne McLeod, hugs all around, tears in her eyes, standing ovation. How about the judges? What do they think? That's what's important. Check that out when we come back. <laughs> 